Name a recent mediocre film. Journey to the Center of the Earth. Okay. And what does that movie have? Oh, let's see. Uh, it's got a mediocre acting. It's got a incomprehensible plot. And, uh, well, it just doesn't understand science at all. You know how that movie could be worse? How? Nazis. Well, I guess it would depend on what studio is doing it. Asylum. Oh, in that case, you have Nazis at the center of the earth. I think we've done this yeah, before. Yeah, we've done It's the Nazis, man. It's the fucking Nazis. Nazis. What is with your fucking fetish for Nazis? So, yeah. Nazis at the center of the earth. With Jake Busey. <laughs> Okay. All right. Where do we start? <laughs> I've seen my my fair share of asylum films. This takes the cake as the worst one I have seen so far. Yeah. Like, w like we've already reviewed 2012 Ice Age for the show, and that actually was actually that, that was actually far better than this one <laughs> in aspects. I will say yes, but as a whole, no. As, as a whole, they're both shitty. Yeah. But to be honest, actually, the CGI in that movie was a lot easier to sit through than the CGI in this film. I don't know. I think we need to rewatch it. it uh, <laughs> I know that's why. It, it's it, <laughs> it. It's like. Uh, All right. Well, this is exhausting. We'll start with the what general. What is with you people? General plot. All right. So. <coughs> It starts out, we're in an Antarctic... Well, there's a flashback sequence, but I don't care about that. Yeah. It starts out, we're in an Antarctic base science... The CGI base. is so obvious in every fucking scene. Whoever uses this has no idea how to use Photoshop. And this is coming from a guy who has absolutely no idea how to use Photoshop. Right. <laughs> so, we're sitting there in an Antarctic base, and there's all these doctors doing some research. And there's that one doctor. He's a bad apple, because he doesn't work by the rules. He's not the hero, mind you. Even though some movies will put that guy as the hero. Played by Jake Busey. Played by... I don't know. I just... How did they get him we'll, to be in this movie? We'll get anyway. into him later. It was like with Bishop being put into Dying God. Like, how do they get these people? So, uh, a group is drilling down in the ice or something, and then they hit a Nazi plane, which was in the earlier scene. But again, they didn't even drill into the ice. It's like yeah, literally it's... under like two inches of snow. They're like drilling, drilling. It's like, hey, call me hit metal. Oh, what then, the fuck? Rush. Hey, look, a Nazi plane. Wonder how we didn't see that one. So, they go missing because Nazis pick them up, and then the other group realizes they didn't check in, so they leave the base to the location where they were, they see the drag marks, they go and find this huge cavern they were dragged into, and then start investigating down beneath it. What's down there, Matthew? Those motions signify that it is an ancient lost city that is now occupied by old Nazis who have somehow maintained their youth and are performing science well beyond modern science. They have also invented technology that A, does not require replacing ammunition for guns that also shoot out these little blue flares that make people disintegrate, thus leaving no evidence behind. Yeah. And B, other stuff. I'm sorry, the, <laughs> the entire time we were sitting through this movie, we had to take like two breaks. We did. Uh, I was calling shenanigans throughout this entire film until I started calling bullshit because <laughs> like, there was this one scene where they're actually starting to propel into the cavern, which obviously they just tilted the camera on the side. Like everyone, it's Antarctic, so they're all wearing big coats and their hoods Yeah, the hood's not there. even like... And the hoods are just staying perfectly up. Yeah. Gravity doesn't exist in this world, apparently. <laughs> but, like, you know, they get down 100 feet on the rope, and then all of a sudden they just unhook and just let go, and all of a sudden they yeah. perfectly slide down this ice chute <laughs> until they reach the bottom. <laughs> now, as unrealistic as that is, I could buy that as much for one person, but then again, the very next shot after that is they're all down there. Every one of them. And it's a group of, like, seven people. Yeah, and so... How? 
So how does that work? What eventually ends up happening is they all stumble across the Nazi thing, but it turns out they were being led there by that one cop who doesn't play by the rules or whatever. No, cop. Why did cop. cop? Why did say cop? You would think. He's like, the cop who lives on the edge and whatnot. Yeah. This is a doctor who lives on the edge and experiments with flesh-eating viruses. He does. This is Busey, mind you. So, they get led there. Apparently he's lived in Antarctica for like 10 years. Yeah, and he stumbled across the Nazis earlier and he wants to work with them, so he brought Zang down Ohio. all these nice... Doctor people to work with the Nazis. The fact that Jake Busey in and of himself says Heil Hitler is hysterical. So, they're all now working for the Nazis, but they're <coughs> all just because they're going to be killed. It's like, work or be killed. So, you obviously would pick... It's very, work. very Nazi-esque. Yeah. You know, just... So, then it's just a matter of they're starting to get all their technology stuff together. And then when we reach the climax, we're going to talk about the climax as a totally separate thing, because there's a lot to go over after a... Uh, Couple of scenes. This whole movie. All right, so uh, let's talk about, I guess, the acting, so we can cover Busey at the same time. I actually thought that Busey was probably going to be the best actor out of all these people, and Jake Busey, as you know, is not exactly a very renowned actor for his <laughs> dramatic roles at all. He's like his brother. Both Gary and Jake Busey are known for playing those wild, wacky, duty, wackadoodle characters. But, who do you think that was actually the best actor out of all these people? Ooh. We obviously don't know anyone else's, the actual actor's names, except for fucking Jake Busey. Right, see, the problem was, everybody had a bad scene. Everyone. There was not one person. Even Busey had some yeah. pretty bad scenes. There was not one person who gave a solid performance throughout. They took every single Or even consistent, well. for that matter. So, if I had to pick one that gave the most good performances, I'd have to pick, actually, one of the two main leads. They did count. Page? Page or the Lucas guy. Yeah. Because Lucas, while he, Lucas floundered a lot... In the beginning... It was on the table. When he yeah. was strapped to the table, he actually did a decent job. Like, when he used to be quiet, when he used to act like, listen to me, I know things are rough, blah, blah, blah. He's not good at that. No. But if he's sitting there, like, panicked and screaming, he's good at that. You know there are those people who have the certain parts where they're good at. He's good at panic and screaming. Yeah. Whereas the female lead... Is the reverse, really. Yeah, she, she was screaming, like, she's giving out scenes like, hey, Hitler, kiss my ass. Yeah, we'll get to that. She's given out scenes like that, and she's just so <coughs> unbelievable with it. But then, earlier in the movie, she's working with the Nazis, and she's giving a good performance of someone who obviously doesn't want to be there. She actually shows confliction. Exactly. Which I didn't expect to, to see in this movie at all, like any three-dimensional depth to any of these characters. Each of the extras had their own little time in the sun, but none of them really stood up even close to as well. As, as those two leads. Now, granted, those two leads are nothing to be proud of. They are... If this I mean, is I like, wouldn't put this movie on my resume. This is Oscar winning right here. This is... This is like... I don't know. What's the worst acting film? This is... Room. No, no. This is uh, Sandy Hook Laundry. Oh, <laughs> yeah. That, that, that is the bottom standard That's bottom you got standard. going on. They're about here. They're not even halfway to amazing performance. But it's not... All the other extras are down here. They're not per turning out anything good. The one scene... Now, I could have literally have forgiven the entirety of this film <laughs> if it wasn't for this one scene that happened about halfway through. They gather all the doctors together, and they march them forward, and then they separate the guys and the girls. And then they ask them where they're taking the girls. And they're taking them to the shower room. You know where this is going. We all know where this is going. I, I will. But it doesn't go there. I will. It goes someplace even far worse. I will say, we each had a stopping point. Yeah, we did. We each had a stopping point. This was This his. was my stopping point. I just could not take... Okay. Imagine Schindler's List. Schindler's List is a great example of the horrors of the Holocaust. You see these piles of dead bodies and it's just it's it's terrible it is honestly it's atrocious it's, it's mind numbing it is a terrible thing to look at as soon 
Okay, it's an asylum film, mind you. As soon as they said they were going to the showers, I said there are two possibilities here. They are either going to get gassed, or they are actually going to take a shower. Now, mind you, earlier scenes that I don't even care to mention has made it seem like they're going to get gassed. But they don't do either one of those. What they do is they set it up as if they are going to take a shower by stripping down. If you have smut in your Holocaust-esque film, you're doing something wrong. Even Uvo Boll didn't sing that one. <sighs> you don't send someone to the gas chambers just to get a nice tit shot. It's... Oh, now, to on. be honest... A lot of Nazi exploitation movies do this. I mean, this obviously, and actually, it's not even nearly as bad as a lot of different movies. Like, it's actually not even as bad when it comes down to smutty scenes, even like the Night Porter, which is a Criterion movie, or like a real Nazi exploitation movie, like the fucking uh, like, uh, like the Gestapo's Last Orgy and that kind of stuff. But still, this is an asylum film. This is a company that has made itself, it has built itself on the prospect of not being taken seriously. Then they throw in a fucking rape scene. Yeah, that's right afterwards. Yeah, like, it, right afterwards. The, the Nazi, like, slices mm -hmm. her, uh, her shirt off and then slices her bra apart. And then you just see there with this random ass tit shot. And then she's just standing there, and then all of a sudden, the, the head doctor, who's who supposedly is Dr. Mengel, by the way, the guy who orchestrated all the atrocities at Auschwitz, basically saying to these Nazis that they can have their way with her. So she gets raped, apparently, by like four of these decrepit decay. Think about... No, I don't want them to think about this. No, think that. about, think about the, uh, the, the, the military guys from Planet Terror mixed together with a burn victim. That's exactly what's happening to these guys. It's very close. It's all it's all the medical experiments to trying to keep them alive. They're like replacing parts of their body because apparently that keeps you youthful. Yeah, apparently this apparently Mangle has replaced almost entirely all of his endoskeleton. And then endoskeleton. I, I love it. I love that part. The rape scene still gets to me though. Yeah. Okay. That wasn't the part that I actually walked away from the movie though, considering my taste and also my Tolerance yeah. for no, movies. Let me take this one. Okay. <clears throat> so, during that same gas chamber scene, one of the women who wasn't the one who got the tit shot is going to be operated on. What do they do? They take off her brain. Because apparently you need stem cells to get this machine that they were talking about earlier to work. Why does it need stem cells? We're not sure yet. We have no idea as to why it could. The damn thing looks like a still for, for distilling moonshine. It is. It's just a huge, like, water heater, essentially. So... <laughs> so, what they then do is there's this woman who's been sleeping with um, the one guy who was actually a Nazi but worked in the base. It's a bit confusing all the relationships, but it works out. So if you can decipher any of them, she's actually pregnant, which we picked up on earlier. That was yeah, we we that picked was that super obvious. We picked that up the moment she starts saying, "Oh, I, I feel faint." Oh, I pregnant. Think it's, it's, oh, she's pregnant. That's that's super. And she, they said she was sleeping with that guy, so obviously it was going to be his baby. So. She then admits that she's pregnant, like flat out, and the guy's like, oh my god, why, sucker didn't, you, punches why didn't you tell me sooner? I'm so sorry. Boom! Knocks her out. Cut to the next scene. She's lying on the operating table. They're like, we're sitting there and we're like, wait a minute. No, as soon as we, she, right before she said she was pregnant, we just sat there and realized, this machine needs stem cells. She is pregnant with a fetus. Fetus has stem cells. You see where this is going? We and I was like sitting there, I'm like, no, they seriously are not going to go that far. So. But they do. They took a vacuum cleaner, not kidding, and they, and they got the stem cells They out. south parked this shit. Yep. And they put the stem cells all into the thing, and all of a sudden, this is where Matt had to quit right there. But then we came back, and I just have to link this together. He came back, and they put the stem cells into the machine, and the machine goes, Psst. And it starts doing all of its stuff, and it starts, it starts turning into a big old robot. And we're like, what? So then we pause it, and we're just like, well, it's, no. They use stem cells to make a robot? No, yeah, really? No. Just... So then we walk out, and we take a couple of And we, we were so naive, thinking that was the worst of it. We came back, and the little heater boiler thing opened up to... 
It's Hitler's severed head. Hitler's severed head. The bullet wound is on the side of his head. Ah! They Futurama this movie. It literally, he's in a glass jar. Seriously, the last <laughs> half of this movie just screams Futurama. The fucking Nazis lift off from the center of the world in a giant flying Nazi saucer. Now, obviously, Asylum is known for ripping off bigger movies. This is a ripoff of, obviously, two films. Journey to the Center of the Earth. Durr. And since this movie came out last year, this is obviously trying to bring up more of the hype of the movie Iron Sky. Now, if you haven't seen Iron Sky, actually watch it. It's a decent, cheesy B-film that was made purposely cheesy and dated the way it is for a reason. It was also produced entirely through Kickstarter. So, I have a respect for the fact that it was able to raise probably a budget bigger than this movie. <laughs> but. But. That doesn't fucking excuse what happens in this movie. Basically, the entire part after that is them just trying to escape from the Nazi... UFO Mecha Hitler! With Mecha Hitler chasing them around. And apparently Mecha Hitler has, like, fucking machine guns and blades and lasers and, like... He has the Iron Man phaser thing. Yeah, the, 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 the ship is totally a ripoff of the, of the ship in the Avengers. Yeah. It's just a Nazified circular version of the Avengers ship. I mean, like... So, yeah, he's gone. So, after that, it, that's basically all you need to know about the movie. There, there isn't much else. That, that, that's it to the movie. Yeah. I mean, like, there is nothing else. It actually is, like... A very, very thin plot. You can't really say much about it's it. It's a really out there plot, but it's thin. Writing, they're, they're, the writing in this movie is, is, is standard asylum stuff. Actually, no, it's low. It's a below average asylum writing, and that's yeah. saying something. Like I guess when they got the higher up <coughs> sent down the plot to the writers, they're like, "Hey, by the way, we're doing Iron Sky and Journey to Center of the Earth." Uh, just mix those two together however you want. Dude, come on. We can't... There's only so much hash we, we can, can smoke, all bro. Alright, hold on. We'll come up with something. Uh, and then they watched a this is drama just... marathon, and Avengers came on, and they're like... Hey, and then he, the one guy took a major powerhouse diarrhea shit on a paper and handed it in. Amazingly, they kept that scene in. No, there wasn't. <laughs> <laughs> it, it's just... It's just so... Now, I will say, there actually is a handful of decent things about this movie. A very small handful. Wait. One, the special makeup effects oh, that they yeah. use with a couple of the characters actually is not bad. There's a character who literally gets all of the skin ripped off of him. He looked like he had all the skin ripped off. Yeah, he, we, they actually did a really decent job for the makeup on him. Yeah. I, so I gotta give him a clap. When it comes for that. to them actually tearing the skin off him, that was yeah. We call shenanigans again. But once you actually saw what he looked like, it's like yeah, that that guy looks like he had his skin peeled off, except for around the eyes. And like, actually, to be honest, right that scene where he's asking them to kill him because of the way he was, also he's like one of his arms and like both of his legs were chopped off and whatnot, so he couldn't move. So they were asking him to kill him to end his misery and whatnot. And actually, the scene was not badly filmed. It wasn't badly edited and whatnot. The emotion, obviously, really was just kind of yeah. flaccid. But it still was a well-put-together sequence. Yeah. Now, yeah, the makeup effects were not bad for a lot of the actors. Now, the CGI is just so bad. And this is a movie that, like... Probably over half of the shots are CGI yeah. shots. No, every time they had a machine of basically any type, they CGI it. Every single time you see Hitler is a major CGI. Well, uh, no. Yeah, I mean, uh, there's a guy who's an actor who is just a glass head thing, but they have to show the body at all. Yeah, and so it's so CGI obviously part? CGI. Like, it's like it, actually, though, one of the worst CGI is when they're actually still up on the surface and they're following the guy uh, uh, in, in the fucking. Uh, there's like, a guy out walking a 30 mile per hour snowmobile. Yeah, snowmobile. he's walking ahead of like a, 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 a snowmobile uh, with a bunch of other guys in there. And he's somehow walking faster than this thing that's going at full tilt. Now, having said that, this 
the guy sometimes you can see is either real or they did a decent composite job on it. Never did a good composite job on this damn vehicle. It's... I know. <coughs> Alright, so we're probably running out of time, so let's go ahead and just... <sighs> directing. What? I don't think any of these movies are ever directed. Yeah. That's, I mean... That's the thing we usually come across. Like, occasionally in these bad films, we can say, like... The director obviously did something or something. Yeah, or they, but, the, the actors are really, like, struggling right. to find purpose. But, but nine times out of ten, there's, like, no evidence that a director existed. Th this literally looks like a work cut of this film. Yeah, it was something you said. During the scenes when um, Mega Hitler was chasing them down, you said that it looked like it was the first Counter-Strike. Yeah, it's, yeah, the yeah. graphics are like that. Like, you know, it, it seriously is unbelievably. This was made last year. Yeah, this last was made year. last. And also, Asylum is like it actually hasn't. It's had some decent effects before in the past. It reuses shit like nothing else. <laughs> like in 2012, it reused the same explosion gif over and over and over again for multiple explosions. This is just. This is just lazy. This is just, this is lazy by Asylum standards. And, again, having said this, I've seen a handful of Asylum films. And, actually, there's a handful of these films that I actually like. Like, to a degree. <laughs> like, the Sherlock Holmes ripoff, or Transmorphers and whatnot. Like, those actually were, were passable, but, like, this is... And also considering the fact that Asylum owns Faith Films, we've come to find out, so they also are actually responsible for Sunday School Musical. It blows the mind. It blows the mind. So, I guess let's start wrapping this up. My final I don't even know if this was produced. No, it was. <laughs> like, the, the, like, the producer, like, maybe walks on, like, the set in the very beginning of the morning, then leaves, and then, like, just hopes that the dailies come in well. No, he didn't need a dailies. He got, like, weeklies. Yeah, there's not even... I, I doubt there were dailies for this movie. I doubt that there were daily shoots for this movie whatsoever, and that actually people won't even watch them. Because some of the takes are so bad. Mm -hmm. Not only are they badly framed, the bat, the CGI is badly keyed in, but also the acting's bad. Just... It's just... It's okay. Bad. It's okay. Just no! This movie is just all of no! <laughs> It's gonna be all right. I mean, like, uh, this this is <laughs> confounding me. <laughs> all right, final opinion. It's final nowhere opinion. near as bad as Sandy Hook, but still. Shut your mouth. Final opinions. Um, I guess if I really had to sum up, there are those movies that you really just need to give one look at it and then just say, okay, at least I saw it. It was very bad, but it, at least I saw it. This is borderline that. You can definitely go your entire life without ever seeing this. But you, you just want to be able to tell somebody, you know, I just watched a movie with a mechanical Hitler. It's just, it's just one of those things that it's like, yeah, well, why not? Plus the title, Nazis at the Center of the Earth. <sighs> somebody was high. Somebody somewhere was high. And they said, you know what would be a great idea. You know how they didn't like all the Nazi stuff with the mythological stuff? Like, in Hellboy, the Nazis, and what if they found an underground city, and they set up shop there, and they discovered immortality, and UFOs, and space races. Shush! That's, yeah. That's so, crazy like, talk! That was the that's any other studio, but Asylum's like... That's any yeah. other sensible human being. Yeah. And, and... So you know what? We're going to make an hour and 29-minute movie off of this one. Um, but overall, there were... Every single aspect of the movie had one or two times that it was capable. It looked as if it was done within a three-week period. It had some competency. Yeah, but, but it was there. There was that... Spark that just didn't carry over in any other sense of the movie. Nothing spread at all. You had, like, there was one good tracking shot. There was one good... Of um, the fucking lights. Yeah. There was one... There, like I said, every <laughs> character had that one acting part where they were okay, but nothing great. That's what this movie is. It's a collection of one-time okays, and then the rest of it's just bad. 
They just managed to space out the okays enough to keep you at least watching. I will say at least this movie was more memorable than 2012 Ice Age. Oh, yeah. Considering, like, <laughs> literally, literally, as we said, like, the movie was completely forgettable to us. This one, nah, it's got some memorable scenes. You don't forget a Mecha Hitler. You don't forget it easy. You don't forget a Mecha Hitler. You don't forget zombie Nazi rape. Ugh. Stop. No. Okay, you know what? I think we're done. So, your final opinion is just get it over with. Mm. Clearly a shit. What? Deiner Film is dein Scheiße. Deiner Film is dein Scheiße! Um, yo, what he said.